what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's your boy no name coming at y'all with the first update video of training camp at least what i think is the first official day of training camp today we got everybody reporting in saquon eli the offensive lineman the defense you name it everybody reported in today it was more of a press day than anything for those of you wondering, the first full day of practice will be tomorrow, starting at around 2.45 p.m. I'll try to get the practice vid out sometime tomorrow, latest Friday. So let's get right into it today. Like I said, it was mostly press, but first I'd like to address some injuries. Uh, we both know that left tackle, Nate Solder, and our, what is presumed to be our right tackle, Mike Remmers, they were out for the entire day of spring practices because of their respective surgeries. I think Sir Solder had one on his ankle and Remmers had one on his back. Uh, they're going according to schedule. The boat reported in today. Um, Solder was uh, said in an interview that he's not sure how much he's going to be able to do, but he's here to do whatever he can. But health-wise, they're both progressing as they're supposed to. Their injuries are healing fine. Hopefully by the end of the summer, they're both back to health and capability we'll see when the time comes now on the unfortunate end Darius Slayton our rookie wide receiver fifth round pick out of Auburn he tweaked his hamstring or something to sort up Pat Schirmer said that it's nothing too serious it is still considered an injury though he should be back soon hopefully he's back by either the end of the week or early next week like like I said according, according to Schirmer it was, it's not that serious hopefully that's the case now moving on to the press conference there's nothing, uh, not too many things to, of note to talk about here. We got a couple quotes from Eli and Shepard, and then at the end, one from Alec Ogletree. Uh, so on Eli, you know, of course, reporters are asking him about his situation. Like, is his post threatened? Is his situation, his position as a starting quarterback threatened? How he's going about the situation and all that. You know, just the general questions that he's been getting since we drafted Jones. And Eli, being Eli, he's just, you know, he has said the right thing. He's completely focused in on the present, not really worrying about anything else, saying about how you got to deal with it. It's in the job description. He just has to go out there and do his best. Hasn't changed for 16 years and never will. You know, he's out there competing against defense, and whenever he's up, he's competing against defense and trying to get players to play their best and make plays. That's the mindset you want to keep. That quote from Eli right there just... Telling reporters, letting them know he's just gonna go out there do his thing, not really worrying about Jones, who, by the way, is continuing his progress from OCAs and the spring practices where he impressed absolutely everybody on the field. And now Jones is uh, seen doing by teammates and coaches uh, more of a intangible thing that you need to do in order to be a New York Giant, and that is gaining the respect of his teammates. And Eli commented on this also talking about when he came in, there was dudes on the team that went to Pro Bowls. There were dudes on the team that went to the Super Bowl, which at that time I think it was Super Bowl either 20 or 30. You know, guys like Michael Strahan, uh, Tiki Barber, Amani Toomer, all these guys were on the team when he came in and Eli was just a scrub. He was just a rookie. Didn't have anything to his name that would make them want to listen to him. So, you know, you got to go out there and prove it. Gotta go out there, get smacked around by the defense, uh, make some right plays, just basically prove yourself as a player before the quarterback can go and tell them how to run their routes and whatnot. And that's what Jones has been doing, keeping his head down, working hard, which we've seen through OTAs, and we're seeing it continue now, and is getting the respect of his teammates. It already got the respect of his coaches. Mike Shula, and I said this in a previous video, said Jones is basically ready to start day one. Not sure how true that is, considering he is a rookie. There's only really a handful of rookies out of every draft class that's ready to start day one. And then Shermer hinted at um, some plans for Jones to be taking first team reps during training camps. According to Shermer, we'll just have to wait and see because we'll be watching a training camp along with him, how he performs with the first team reps and how many first team reps he's going to get. Now Shermer, kind of the opposite of Gallman has been heavily favored for Jones. He's always talked positively of Jones and at one time hinted that he thinks Jones might be better than Eli at this point in their career and wouldn't mind him starting day one. We've always seen this from Shermer and he's kind of been going out of his way to showcase the skill set and the progress that Daniel has made. So, you know, I'm kind of excited to see what he got planned. He only got a couple of first team reps during OTAs. 
I expect him to get a lot more now that Shermer is telling the reporters we're going to have to wait and see it reveal itself. Now moving on to Shepard, questions surrounding him or I mean the questions directed at him really generally surround the topic of the new leadership position he finds himself in because Sterling Shepard, believe it or not, is the longest tenured wide receiver on the Giants in terms of how many years he's been with the Giants. He's the only receiver in the room that's been with them for more than a year. Everybody else has been there a year or less. Of course, Shepard has been there since 2016, his rookie season when we drafted him in the second round out of Oklahoma. And up until up until them trading Odell, he really wasn't um, much of a leader on the team. Yes, he had leadership qualities, but now he's sort of thrusted into that role, similarly to Jenkins was on the defensive side. He says there's a lot on his plate, both on the field and off the field, that he has to do, but he's here to work, here to do what the coaches need him to do, here to do the right thing, give advice to anybody that needs it, and go out there and play his best. He even mentioned that he feels a little bit of the last two seasons with Odell being out most of 2017 and then towards the end of 2018 he's sort of been groomed and has the experience of being the number one receiver so he knows uh, some things that he has to do which is true when Odell was out he only played guys we gotta remember only 16 out of the last 32 games for the Giants Odell played because of injuries so the other 16 games Shepard was the guy you know on and off the field he was that guy I, myself, as along with a lot of our Giants fans, are excited to see what he can do because personally, we all believe that he's one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. Definitely one of the best slot receivers out there. I know he could play outside, but I want them to keep him inside. If they're going to use anybody outside, let it be Golden Tate. Not only does he have more experience there, but I'd, I'd rather Shepard stay inside and catch balls, you know, catch the seam routes, catch the slants, and just go up for the touchdown. That's what he does best. And now finally... Like I mentioned before, we got some from Alec Ogletree speaking on the defense. Who He says he believes this defense can be a top 10 unit in 2019. And I don't know how to feel about that. Like, We definitely have a lot of young talent and a lot of untapped potential. I don't think it would be a top 10 this year, but maybe the year after when we've already developed a lot of our young guys and probably cracked some of their shells to see what they got. But as of right now... I think we could be a top 15 defense at best just because of all the new people that we have. Like just on Monday, we brought in two new safeties, Trey Boston and Johnson Cyprian. There's a lot of people there that have to adjust to the 3-4 style that James Betcher coaches with. And then the guys from last year still have to develop. Because like I said, our best players last year, like right off the bat, right off the top of my head, Ogletree, who was only, that was his first year. Then it was Carter and Hill, who were rookies. After good, those guys, probably Collins and, you know, a couple of role players, rotational guys. But um, we definitely have the potential to be top 10. It will just take time. You got to realize, guys, like we're completely new on the defensive side at almost every position. New safeties, definitely new cornerbacks, potential of being some new starting inside linebackers. Got a couple of new outside linebackers. I think it's going to be Marcus Golden. Um, that would start come day one, but who knows how it turns out. And then on the defensive tackle side, we got one new guy. So for the majority of defense, it's new, and it's new, it's in, and it's young. We're raw and untapped, but I like this uh, comment from Ogletree because that's the type of attitude and belief that will get us back to the top. So that's all I got for you all today. Like I said, the first full practice is on Thursday, so that's when we're going to see some action on the field. Let me know what you all think. Like, share. Put your comments down below, subscribe, I'm out, you're...